patients should definitely be on medications, either or black and white. We're not going to program things. Harm reduction approach and alcohol and addiction says some people getting totally off, being totally abstinent, that's going to work best for them. Some people, that's not going to be the best approach for them. The first thing that they need is not uh, to come off of, of drugs or alcohol. They need, they need housing first. So it's a harm reduction approach. You may need to support someone to be able to um, uh, continue to be doing what they're doing because that's what works best for them. It's a meet people where they're at approach. Harm reduction around sex education says, look, some people are going to have sex, so let's provide condoms to them, let's provide education, let's not just say you shouldn't have any sex at all, but realize that everybody is going to be different around that. So it's a flexible approach. So we said, look, let's take this approach to psychiatric drugs. And when we're taking a harm reduction approach, um, we need to look at all the different kinds of harm that are, that are involved here. It's a mistake to think that the only risks that are involved are from medication. That should be really clear. Medications are not the only harm that we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about the harm that can come from the crisis that someone is in, the dis disruption of their, their family, of their schooling, of their work, the difficulties that they get into the police, the housing, all the different things that when we are in a state of, that gets called psychosis, um, it, gets, it, it gets called madness, all the different potential harm that can come from that. There's also the harm that potentially can come from, from treatments, from going into the hospital, it's potentially harmful, it can potentially be traumatizing force, it's frequently used in hospital settings, which can be very harmful to people. Diagnostic labels, some people identify with their um, label, I'm bipolar, I'm schizophrenic, that's useful for them. For other people, it can be very, very harmful to get that message that I am a label. Um, and then there's also the potential harm that comes from medications. And so what we're trying to do is to look at all the different harms that someone is facing and help somebody to make a good, um, informed choice. And to do that, we need to be honest about all the different kinds of harm that are involved. We don't want to overstate the harm that can come from being in a crisis and we don't want to overstate the harm that can come from being on medication. We don't want to understate those either because there are very serious dangers involved in all these things. We want to be honest about all the different harms. And of course, it's not, a, it's not a mathematical equation. All we can do is dialogue, think, educate ourselves. The piece of the puzzle that we haven't talked about enough in our society is the harm that can come from medications. And as um, Robert Whitaker talked about, he talks about the book Anatomy of an Epidemic, um, that harm can be very serious. <coughs> and the harm increases um, significantly when we're talking about uh, long-term uh, use of medication. So when we're comparing all these things, we need to be realistic about the many, many dangers that go along, with especially <coughs> long-term use of medications. And also, we need to also be careful to not exaggerate the potential harms that can come from crisis itself. Usually when someone is acting weird, they're in a different space, they're not communicating, they're very depressed or anxious, or they've got wild energy, we tend to just label that and then say, oh, that's bad, we need to get rid of it. Uh, voices, hearing voices is a really good example. Well, you don't necessarily need to just do everything you can to get rid of voices. There are ways of working with their, their, that experience. There are ways of, of living with that experience. Sometimes it's extremely negative and scary. Sometimes it can also be positive or helpful. Some people like, like the experience of being a voice here, can be tied into creativity and spirituality. But let's not demonize and be too scared of what gets called uh, psychosis as we're looking at all the different risks here. Another part of that is, is also looking at the risk of suicide. Often just mentioning, oh, I had a suicidal thought, will get a huge reaction and can get you locked up because the risk of that is so exaggerated. The, the doctors, professionals will think that that's all we should talk about. We need to focus on that. We need to put you in a locked room because that's um, this incredibly scary, risky thing. Well, it is risky and it is scary. Let's not exaggerate that because many of us have suicidal thoughts and we don't act on them. In fact, it's actually much more common for people to have suicidal feelings. If you start to talk with your friends, people who've never been in the mental health system, they may say, yeah, you know, 
it was just time in my life, and I was feeling suicidal, and so um, we need to not exaggerate the risks that come with that. The situation that we have in our country today around drugs is that we've created not just for um, psychiatric drugs, but for all drugs, we've created this very odd situation, which is that we have our angel drugs and we have our devil drugs. We are very black and white and either or when it comes to drugs. So we have, if you turn on TV, you'll get the angel drugs. Oh, you've got the anxiety. <laughs> and like, you know, it's like, it always shows someone who is like black and white and it's like really not feeling very good. That's the before. That's sort of walking along. The buzzard clouds. And then the next scene is technicolor. And they're running with the frisbee and the dog. And like, I'm not exaggerating. That's how these advertisements are. the just say no to the devil drugs. Oh no, we have to never never use marijuana because it'll lead to insanity and all these different messages that we get. So our society in general is very, very disturbed and it's not very rational around, thank you, around this discussion about drugs in general. So let's be honest about our discussion of drugs and medication. Let's not polarize this. Let's not get into either or thinking. Let's recognize that there are people who use recreational drugs and they seem to you know, do okay. It's, let's not exaggerate that. There are people who are on psychiatric drugs and they do great. Let's not exaggerate the dangers there. Let's have a much more honest discussion about drugs. And let's also just talk about um, how drugs work and how they don't work. And we'll get into that in a moment. Um, one of the first things we want to do when we're approaching coming off um, psychiatric drugs is to educate ourselves. And it's very, very difficult because our culture is so polarized. There's so much missing information. There's a lot of resources that are listed in the guide that I encourage you uh, to check out. Um, talk with people in your life. Try and cultivate, cultivate multiple sources of information. Uh, your providers, your prescribers may have good information. They may not. Often they don't have good information. Often the information is, is missing and educate yourself. That's one of the first steps that we want to do, educate um, each other. There's no end to the educational process. So we're always making calculated decisions. We're also making the, making the best decisions that we can. When we talk about risk, no one is, is free of risk. We just had a power outage here. And, uh, in Southern California, there could be an earthquake here. <laughs> So when we talk about risk reduction and harm reduction and looking at risk, we're not talking about coming to zero risk. We're talking about balancing different risks. So um, Robert Whitaker's book is excellent for providing missing information. Um, and there's a lot of different sources that are on the internet that are on that are listed in the guide that I would encourage you um, to check out. A few of the key messages that you need to know in the coming off medication process that you may not have heard before. And these are, this is information that's just not available, it's not believed, it's not the least accurate information. It's really important. One of the big messages is that people do recover. People do recover. It's a message that we all know we're at the recovery conference. We've been doing a great job. 25 years ago, that message wasn't out there. Now that message is out there. So great for us. Congratulations that we got that message there out there. Another important message that people may not know is that many people can and do recover without medications. Not everyone, but many people. I haven't taken medications in 17 years. That's my experience. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. I have many friends who take medication. They're doing great. Many friends who are taking medication and having a hard time or thinking about coming off or struggling with, com with coming off. That's the message we need to be clear about. Some people do well, some people don't do well. Some people get off medications and they do better. People can recover without medications. Some people are going to be in a process and really realize, hey, actually, I do better with my medication. Let's be honest about that, too. So that's one of the important messages that we need to be clear on when we're discussing coming off psychiatric drugs. Um, I mentioned before the way in which we create the devil drugs and the evil drugs. And, we do recognize that, folks, drugs are drugs. Drugs are drugs. And actually, the way in which recreational drugs, there are the 
the legal recreational drugs like alcohol, that well, we're in California, so it's not entirely illegal. Uh -huh. Drugs like marijuana, <laughs> there's the, right, the, the social drugs like caffeine, sugar, kind of sort of like a drug in some ways. We tend to think of them as like there's these drugs over here and these drugs over here. There's we call them these drugs we call them drugs, and these drugs we call them medications. Yes. Well, actually, they're all psychoactive chemicals. They're all psychoactive chemicals. They take them and enter into the body. They make very strong changes in brain chemistry. And let's not be afraid of changes in brain chemistry because your brain chemistry is changing all the time. You need a meal. Your brain chemistry changes, right? Um, you, take this, you take a psychoactive substance, whether you call it a recreational drug or a medication, it makes very strong changes in your brain. And then you experience consciousness changes, effects. Um, this makes me feel good, this makes me not feel good. I feel sleepy, I feel energized, I feel um, better, I feel worse, based on how your consciousness interprets those changes that take place in your brain and, and in your body. Now that's true of smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, snorting a line of cocaine, or taking a Milipop, or taking Ritalin, or taking Prozac. They're all psychoactive chemicals here. And what that should help us to understand is that sometimes psychoactive chemicals can be really helpful for us. I mean, there are folks who are taking psychiatric medications. It's helpful for them. There are, we have power. We have power, right? Yeah. Uh, we're, well, we're doing this with uh, iPhones, so we don't have the... Uh, is it working now? Okay, great. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Better with that. Yes. yeah it's better with this one. okay hey, thank you so much for coming and helping us out here um, so psychoactive chemicals make changes in the brain and those changes can be helpful or not okay so how many people have ever been on a deadline and drunk a cup of coffee and said wow thank you so much psychoactive chemical you got me my deadline okay so how many let's take a step further how many people I know this is a recovery conference, but a lot of us do drink alcohol. How many people kind of use alcohol to unwind, to relax, to kind of keep your head together? Okay, let's be honest about that. There are even some studies that say it could be beneficial to drink a glass of wine, that kind of thing. So that's using a psychoactive chemical as a, as a wellness tool. Okay. Chocolate. Chocolate, yeah. It has psychoactive it goes definitely. It has psychoactive But I want to say that you may find chocolate helpful to you, but for me, one of the ways that I live without medications is I'm really, really careful about my diet, about nutrition. And I'm not exaggerating. If I would eat chocolate, I can go into a psychotic state. I'm not exaggerating. In fact, if you, if you look on the internet, if you Google caffeine psychosis, caffeine sensitivity psychosis, you will find that many people have extreme reactions to caffeine. I'm one of those people. So again, if we're talking about the benefits that some people have for certain kinds of medications, the benefits that some people have for certain kinds of psychoactive May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Power has been restored in the Thank you for your patience and understanding. <laughs> going with this is that don't let's not prejudge how people are going to respond just because you love your chocolate don't assume that you know encouraging me to, to join you is a good thing <laughs> it's, it's, it's not folks and I, I mean and I have I have now does that mean that those of you who find chocolate helpful um, have a, some kind of disorder or, <laughs> I mean my, I have friends I don't I don't smoke marijuana in fact I can't be in a room with people who have their smoke and I, I, I have a hard time even hearing people talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm so sensitive. So, um, but that's me. Some people, there are people who use medical cannabis, medical marijuana, to help them with some psychiatric condition that's becoming more and more popular and recognized. That's them. I have friends who have been diagnosed with bipolar, and it, uh, marijuana calms them down and helps them. 